particularly true when you make choices about ethical behavior. And one of the things that unites all of us as Rotarians is this four-way test. And it's an opportunity to gauge ethically how we look at ourselves in terms of what we think and what we say and what we do. And for me, ethics means the, the rules and the standards that are predictive of our behavior and our actions. When bad choices are made about ethical decisions, difficult things happen. So I like to use music to emphasize what I'm attempting to say to you about looking at choices in your life. So hang on for just a minute, and I'll get my guitar. challenges in life. And I like a particular singer who still lives in Nashville. He is about 79 years old. He was a cocaine addict. He was an alcoholic. He would show up at arenas in the 1970s and 80s, and they'd be packed with 15,000 people, and he would be so stoned that he could not perform. People would go home disappointed. His name is George Jones. George Jones may arguably have the finest voice ever to sing a country song. He has been sober for 12 years. In 1998, he recorded a song that he did not write, but it is biographical. And the song is called Choices. I'm going to sing you the opening eight lines. Now look, let's get straight on this. When I finish, you under, are under no obligation to applaud. All right? None at all. I don't want you to feel any pressure. In fact, I find often that when I finish, I hear people murmuring a prayer that says something like, thank you, God, that it was only eight lines. So here's the song. Think about your own life and what's available to you as you embark upon this next stage of your journey. Well, I've had choices since the day that I was born. Yeah, there were voices that told me right from wrong. If I'd have listened, well, I wouldn't be here today, living and dying. With the choices I made, I've been living and I've been dying with the choices I've made. Choices I've made. It's 
not possible. And for all of you that are about to graduate from high school, you've got all of this freedom in front of you. And what is it that you're really going to focus on in terms of your own ethical choices? Now, as a Rotarian, I've really come to appreciate the value of this statement called the four-way test. It's a simple statement, but it unites us as Rotarians, and it gives us a common bond, and it gets us thinking about similar things in terms of integrity. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Where did this statement was written by a man by the name of Herbert Taylor in the year 1932 in the city of Chicago, Illinois. And he had been asked by the creditors of a failing company to come into the company and save the company from bankruptcy. This company was called the Club Aluminum Company, and it sold cookware in the early years of the Depression. And people didn't have enough money to buy food, let alone to buy cookware. And he is asked to save this nearly bankrupt organization, and he had choices. He could have chosen to focus on the features and the benefits of the products that they sold. He didn't. He could have chosen to focus upon the manufacturing quality of the products that they made, but he didn't. He could have chosen to focus on the price of the products. care about your interests, and character is important to us. And Herbert Taylor turned the company around. He was subsequently a R.I. International President. And the Club Aluminum Company survived, and the key word was character. If I were out looking for a job today, I would want to interview with a company that was interested, first of all, in my integrity secondly, in my skills. Because that would be the kind of organization that I would like to be a part of. And when I look at the four-way test, it gives us an opportunity to think about these things. And the times of 1932 are somewhat similar, although much more severe than today. To today. It was a time then of poor economy and high unemployment, and people's confidence was shaken. Business and communities were suffering, and Taylor turned this around with an emphasis on character. And he wrote this four-way test so his employees would have a guide when they had to make decisions about what did they want to do to meet a customer's interest, for example. And he didn't want to tell his employees what to do. He wanted them to make their own decisions. He was giving people the freedom of choice in a very difficult situation. So as the company survived, this particular mantra of principles became something that Rotary adopted. So now I need to express a personal opinion. Do we need the four-way test? I believe we need it significantly in today's society. I can tell you that from my point of view, I think we are facing an ethical crisis in our society. I think that we are seeing breaches of ethical behavior in so many different aspects of life. It disappoints me. It frightens me. For those of you who are 17, 18, 19 years old, you can change this. You can change this. We are not going to upgrade our ethical standards by passing more laws. You cannot legislate yourself out of an ethical crisis. Got a world today where I don't know if we're committing more ethical breaches than we used to.